All right. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm Aldo. Um, I'm grateful to know some of you. Some of you are new faces. Uh, some of you I've met when I was much younger, uh, tagged along with my dad. So um, I've been selling real estate for about three years now, um, but a little funny story. Um, so I actually sold my first house when I was like 10 or 12 years old. I don't remember exactly. Um, true story. So um, at the time, I was playing soccer, actually right behind here at the um, Fullerton Sports Complex um, with the Fullerton Rangers. And um, so it's funny. We'd play soccer in the morning, and then in the afternoon, we'd sometimes have like open houses. We used to do open houses back then. Um, so yeah, soccer game, I was like super tired. We went to the open house, and I was like, Dad, uh, it's like 1 or 2 p.m. Like, can we please go home? <laughs> um, and he goes, all right, 20 more minutes. And so in that last 20th minute, these two couples came in, and he said, he gave me a flyer, and he said, all right, go introduce yourself to this couple, and tell them a little bit of the house, you know, three bedrooms, two bath, it's a nice house, and then um, he went to go talk to the other couple, and so it turns out the couple that I talked to really fell in love with the house, uh, they made an offer, and they bought the home that same weekend, so it was the first time I sold a house, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> um, so I always like to say that I grew up in my dad's office and around the business, um, so yeah, um, can you guys scroll down a little bit? Anyway, so experiences like these uh, gave me a little bit more experience than I really like to admit in the whole industry. So, um, so at age 20, I decided to join my father in business, um, and I realized we needed to find a way to take his business to the next level, or I find it, I needed to find a way to take his business to the next level. So we created a mission statement, um, and you'll notice there's a huge emphasis here on helping those people around us. So we then found we needed to find a team, and I realized we needed to differentiate ourselves from other real estate agents and other real estate teams out there. So instead of just selling real estate, uh, we decided to do something more, and we're set on helping those around us increase their lifestyles and achieve financial security. So we set out to provide the solution to the biggest problem most people have, which is the inability to save money, right? Yeah. Um, so we now help people create financial security and wealth through real estate. Okay, so why real estate when there's a bunch of other investments? There's a bunch of other ways to, to get there, um, like these here. And some of these work really well, uh, but the reason I chose to enter this industry is because I can get behind the product. I really believe in the product. So being around my father's office, um, I was able to see what real estate did for um, other people and their families. So notice I've not said anything about selling real estate. Um, so I firmly believe real estate is the safest and most rewarding tool that you can use to enhance your lifestyle. So real estate, it opens doors to more financial tools and there's a great history of return. It's, it's tangible, it's scalable, um, there's compound and leverage, my favorite two words. So real estate, regardless of the percentage it increases with um, over time, it allows you to leverage your home for more wealth. So not many other options do that. So a property will actually allow you to borrow more than the dollars that you put into the home. So there's plenty of other investment tools and methods out there, but I can speak for my team and I when I say that the best investment is in yourself. And investing in real estate is a great way to do that. So you've probably all heard, California real estate market is crazy. Uh, bubble's gonna burst. Um, and the reason that California real estate is so crazy is because it's the best place to live. We're all living here, right? So um, it has the most to offer. You can play in the desert. You can see the desert. You can play in the snow. You can surf some of the world's best beaches. And at the end of the day, you can finish off with a bite at In-N-Out. World's best cheeseburger. World's best cheeseburger. Um, so I understand there might be some worry because everyone hears things like the market's crazy. Market's way too hot. Prices are way too high. The bubble is going to burst. That's my favorite one. Um, so while viewing home ownership rates, right over here, home ownership rates from 2005 to 2021, we can see that California has, has had the biggest drop in home ownership rates across the nation. So while this is alarming, uh, this shows us that there's a way to secure your future by making profit here. Um, so although we have the biggest drop in home ownership rates, we've also had um, some of the lowest rental vacancy rates. So what this means is that your real estate investments in California are among the safest in the nation. So this means there's a high demand for rentals here. Everybody wants to rent here. So 
Um, while other states may have lower barriers of entry, their rental vacancy rates can be up to 15%. Um, so as a landlord here, you're in control. You're in control of the market. The demand is for what you have. So our experience has also showed us that rentals get 40 times more applications than homes for sale, further emphasizing the point that uh, the demand is for rental property. So even with the amount of new home buyers in the market. So how are you gonna make money with real estate? What everyone's here for? Um, there's three ways, there's cash flow, which is the difference from the rent your tenants pay and the mortgage that you pay. There's tax benefits, repairs, depreciation, improvements as tax deductions. And then finally, my favorite, appreciation and equity. These are the real underground heroes. This is what you really are looking for. So, I won't say a fun fact, but a fact, the median wealth among renters is $75,000 and the median household wealth among homeowners is $254,900. This is 109% more than renters. And that wealth, as you can guess, is typically stored in equity in a property. So the appreciation in the last year across the country has been $33,400 um, and $70,000 in California. So we're, we've had a about 16% increase in the last 12 months. So that's, that's a lot of equity. Okay, so let's look at a conservative example of a typical $750,000 home in Orange County. A typical home in this range could rent for about $3,500 a month. And if we leave rent at a constant $3,500, we would collect $42,000 a year. And $210,000 in five years. Uh, after five years, the mortgage would be, would be paid down $210,000 while appreciating uh, appreciate, appreciation at historic average of 6.77% would bring total property value to $1,040,000. Sorry, $1,040,656,000. And every month, this mortgage would be paid down by someone else. Okay, so historically, every 10 years, real estate tends to double in price. So a property starting at $750,000, I'll just show you here. $750,000 um, in 10 years would be worth about $1.5 million. Plus your mortgage would be paid down by someone else. So these appreciating gains plus the mortgage pay down uh, plus your original down payment, which we don't even mention here, equals a total equity in the rental property, which uh, is represented here by this green value. So green is the equity. And this graph is not accounting for rising rent, which goes up 5% every year, can go up 5% annually. So by owning a property, you can see here that the money is working for you, and you're not really working for the money. So this money, this green equity, this was not saved by you. You didn't put this in. So the question is, where will you be in five years, and where would you like to be in 10 years? Okay, so most think of investing in real estate as flipping houses, and most think of doing this on the side. Uh, by doing this, you're actually missing out on the true benefit of investment properties, which is compounding and leverage, my two favorite words. So this method's a bit different. We call it the Burr method. Some of you may have heard of it. Okay. So Burr stands for buy, rent, refinance, and repeat uh, with the same capital that you started with. So there's no selling here. There's no flipping here. You simply recycle the money that you already invested. So you buy one property to start, uh, likely your primary residence, and you then build equity and cash out refinance down the line. So cash out refinance works a little bit like this. Let's say a home was purchased in the past for 500,000. It's now worth 900,000 because of appreciation. You can borrow up to 70% of this new home's value, home's new value. And you reinvest this money into another property. Rent the property within the first month and then you refinance the second property a little further down the line. So for those who already own free and clear homes, uh, with no capital to buy more, this is an easy solution. Refinance, you'll have two mortgages, but you'll also have two assets appreciating instead of one. You can compound and leverage these as well. So this method only needs a small percentage to start, uh, likely found in your first property, uh, and it's a solution to most people's problems of having a lack of capital to buy, rent, refinance, and repeat. Again, using the same capital. There's no hard money loan here. 
So the Burr method has uh, a much lower barrier of entry because you're only borrowing from yourself. And you're able to compound and leverage your money with this method. And historically, the average rate of appreciation in California is 6.77% year over year. So homes have appreciated, have appreciated in the last year at 14% in Orange County. So the great thing here is that you can leverage the entire value of your home, not just the money that you put in. So for example, 6.77% of a $750,000 home, 6.77% uh, of 750 is much greater than 6.77% of the $150,000 down payment. It's five times more. So the Burr method allows you, to, uh, it provides you a passive income and it's not something you need to put a lot of time into. So what do you invest in? Um, one to four unit residential properties where we start. Uh, this ranges from a single bedroom condo to four unit buildings. Uh, with more units like duplexes and smaller apartment complexes, you can have more tenants allowing you to have more cash flow and more security. So these are guaranteed money makers. Um, a small condo, however, is a great starting point because of the leverage. So don't get discouraged if you think I'm just buying a one bedroom condo. There's a lot of leverage there. There's also what we call STRs, short term rentals and vacation homes. Um, these have the potential to make much more than your mortgage payment. So short-term rentals and vacation homes have been made super easy by apps like Airbnb and Verbo. Who here has used Airbnb? Uh, I, I booked like a whole week, uh, three Airbnbs for next month, so really stoked. Um, so anyways, guidance is still needed though for these because you, need, really, you really need to understand the market that you're investing in and there's a bit of a difference in each market. So uh, many short-term rentals and vacation homes uh, are seasonal, so it's important to understand that when running the numbers. And the success of these SDRs are based on their location and tourist attractions. So, uh, but these SDRs, short-term rentals, appreciate just like any other investment property, and the Burr method works just as well. Uh, I have a little bit of a testimonial here from someone who's done it. This, um, just, this is uh, my good friend Tony Ramos. We bought this property in June. And about a month later, we started uh, looking at our finances and seeing how we can buy the next property, which uh, we found about a month later. And uh, in Joshua Tree, how much did you put down for Joshua Tree? Uh, that one was uh, about a little north of 22K. Okay, 22K, and what's your monthly payment now? Uh, about 1100. Okay, and with the rentals, what are you gonna be running a year? Well, on average in that area, uh -huh. for us, like that exactly. About 32000 to 36000 a year on Airbnb. Okay. Um, and that's me only renting it out half the time. Okay. There you go. Not and bad. And uh, today, uh, okay, so we just closed on Joshua Tree last Friday, and today we went to go look at uh, properties in Palm Springs. So we're going to be putting in an offer in about two hours and then uh, moving on to the next one. On to the next one. Congratulations, Tony. Thanks, man. So I love talking about Tony because he's actually one of my best friends. And... Um, he is 27 now. He's all tattered up. He looks like a up to no good, but um, he's a good guy. Um, so he bought a condo in Anaheim like 2019. He used his first home to cash out refinance and purchase a cabin, a vacation home in Joshua Tree, uh, where he's making about $22,000, $23,000 a year uh, conservatively because he likes to use the cabin as well. Um, so he then refinanced this cabin. Uh, I think, Gilbert, where, how long ago was that? Okay, so six months ago, seven months ago, he refinanced that cabin and he bought another condo. Um, and he he's, hasn't stopped since. So if he can do it, anybody can do it. Okay, so to recap, the Burr method will allow you to make money on autopilot without saving money. Remember that green value I showed on the graph? You didn't save that money. It's exponential because you get to leverage the entire value of the property. There's the cash flow. There's the uh, tax uh, benefits and there's the appreciation, the leverage, and the compound. Uh, so the Burr method in real estate is the safest and fastest path to wealth. It's safe from inflation as well, so property values go up in conjunction with the inflation rate of the day. And so the real profit, the real profit is in appreciation and equity. Appreciation makes wealth. So most investment programs talk about cash flow. Uh, cash flow is fantastic. I I, I like cash flow. Um, but with a little bit of patience, you can see that the appreciation is where the real money is made. That's the silent hero. Uh, 